Hello, this is Unsung with Game Leap, and in today's video, we're going to be giving you a top lane tier list for patch 14.1. As always, these tier lists are primarily geared towards those of you that want to climb. There are certain picks here that are much better in the hands of an enthusiast. Akali is a great example. This champion is not low tier, but because of how well we have to play her in top lane, she is rated just a tad lower than she would normally be rated. That being said, this patch in particular has a lot of the higher skilled top laners rated really, really high, and this is simply due to how strong they are in the current meta. Let's go ahead and dissect this tier list, starting off with C tier. Rengar, Alawi, and Yone have all received a very hard smack by the top lane changes. Rengar has lost a huge amount of control over the lane because the bushes are so far away from where minions crash, it's easy to get out of his range and soak XP, and thus he loses his level 3 spike. This is a massive negative to this pick because he is not that great out of lane and he wants to be incredibly aggressive in the early game, which is no longer an option for this champion, which of course will result in him dropping quite a few tiers. Aside from Rengar, Alawi is the next biggest loser of top lane. The spacing of the lane prevents her from actually setting up her tentacles, meaning that if we do land an E on somebody, uh, that we simply do not receive any follow-up damage unless we're directly hugging the wall. If we do manage to hit somebody with our E and we are hugging the wall, they can simply walk away from us and thus end the trade early as well, which is terrible for allowing. She does not have the mobility nor the damage to be a threat in the wider lane. Sundered Spear is also bugged in this champion to not work, but she can go Iceborne and is able to chase people down with her W once she does have a couple of points in it. This is okay in certain matchups and it does make the champion somewhat salvageable, but the fact that she can't basically use her tentacles at all is kind of hard to look past to say the least. We can still E somebody near a wall and then have a tentacle spawn up and then use our E into ulti, you get the idea. But this champion does not excel at late game team fights. She's okay in dragon fights if we're allowed to set up beforehand, but the sheer lack of pressure that the champion provides makes her a very hard loser of the patch. Terrible champion right now. Wait until Riot reworks her. Yasuo and Yone are champions that I would not really expect to have this low on a tier list because their kits do hold up quite well. However, the loss of Holebreaker brings Yone top down from being super high tier to being low tier as a result. Holebreaker is a huge reason as to why Yone was so strong in the top lane. It also gave him a huge amount of unnoticed durability in teamfights so whenever we're using our ultimate or our third Q and we're dashing through a large portion of the enemy team, it would actually reset our Holebreaker resistances and then it would take the two seconds to decay back off of him, making him deceptively tanky. The loss of that version of Holebreaker has severely harmed Yone to the point where he's basically not functional top lane especially against the S plus tier picks that we're going to talk about in just a moment. Yasuo is in a similar vein to Yone, but I do personally believe that this champion is just a tad better than Yone because he has more early game pressure. This early game pressure does translate into a decent lead if we can maintain that, but we do have to play perfectly on this champ compared to some of the other picks. There is a new old build floating around on Yasuo, which is Blade of the Rune King into Iceborne Gauntlet. This is better on Yasuo than it is on Yone because Yasuo is able to actually exert himself in the lane a lot earlier than Yone is, but uh, to be honest, both these champions are kind of subpar in the top lane in season 14 and it does show quite easily. Just a quick reminder, if you want a more in-depth look at any of these champions, head on over to GameLeap.com. We have courses for every single champion on this list, so that way you can get into ranked as soon as possible without having to worry about learning all of a champion's intricate mechanics. We've already done it for you. Now that we have covered our C tier champions, let's go ahead and move on to B tier. B tier is where champions are going to be a little bit better than the C tier ones number wise, but still have some sort of gigantic kit flaw. Volibear is a great example of this. He does well into other juggernauts, but unfortunately most of the viable juggernauts and the top lane picks in general can disengage from him and then outscale him because of that. Volley's kit isn't the worst, but it is binary and predictable, and this predictable nature makes him too honest of a champion to succeed in most matchups. What we can do is cheese people with W Max, but then if we're playing W Max Volibear, our opponent has to constantly stay on top of us, and with the majority of the top lane picks, that is just not an option. Another great example of this is Mundo. Mundo, while he's not an exceptionally weak champion, is just very honest in what he wants to do, and unfortunately, the picks that are so strong top lane right now completely shut down his scaling and make him a non-issue. Urgot is in the same vein. This champion isn't necessarily bad, but Warden's Mail is an item in League of Legends, which does completely negate his W for the early levels of the game. Unfortunately, these champions are just not very competitive competitive in their current state, and it's going to remain that way until we see a meta shakeup, which very fortunately should be coming quite soon. Now that we talked about our B tier, let's go ahead and talk about our A tier. Renekton is a great example of an A tier champion on this patch. There are a bunch of really good build options for Renekton, but nothing that really sticks out as the one build that beats out all the rest. Blade the Rune King carry Renekton is very strong in lane, but it falls off omega hard, especially against the new busted mage itemization. The new on hit AD carry itemization and the tanky option in Jack show also make mincemeat of this poor lizard very quickly. On the Right side though, Rankton does have a very stable lane.
lane, and he's able to neutralize most of the S tier picks in the game, just not make too much of an impact by himself. The second that he falls behind, it's easy to kill the champion over and over and over again, and his weaker itemization options compared to the rest of the cast do hold him back. That being said, you can and will carry games on the champion, he is just not as overpowered as some of the other picks on the list. Set is another great denizen of A tier, this champion always does the same thing, he is always somewhat stable and he'll be decent even if he has the worst items in the game simply due to how strong his ulti and his W are. Set is an absolute brick wall, this champion does very well when he's left alone in the lane, he's able to take towers pretty quickly, but his kit does hold him back quite a bit. Because he's so immobile, it's hard to translate a lead into a meaningful one in the mid game, which is where Set falls off the most. Ultra late game, he's amazing, ultra early game, he's amazing, but the mid game slump is 100% what holds him back. Now that we covered our A tier, let's go ahead and get into the meat potatoes of this video, which is going to be the S and S plus tier. My first pick for S tier, even for the average player, will be Cassante. The new tank items have had a profound impact on Cassante's place in the meta. This champ has gone from one of the most difficult champions in all of League to learn before his rework to being one of the strongest but more intricate tanks in the game. As we kind of talked about in our item videos, Hollow Radiance has done wonders for Cassante's lane matchups against mostly AP champions, which are highly popular at the moment. This item allows you to shove in basically every lane and constantly have priority so you're constantly able to go towards Void Grubs no matter if you play him top or mid, but Cassante top lane is definitely eating good. My two personal favorite builds on this champion are Hollow Radiance into Frozen Heart or Sunfire Cape into Abyssal Mask, depending on what the enemy team has. If we also just want to max out the stats on our Q as soon as possible, then we can also go Force of Nature and some sort of HP item. This is a perfectly viable alternative. The new version of Force of Nature does allow for Cassante to overstack his Q very early on in the game if the enemy team does have enough magic damage. Despite being a tank, this champion has a great matchup into Fiora as well, so we don't have to worry too much about Fiora, we can always outplay her. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, most tanks this patch are incredibly strong and basically blind pickable as long as Fiora is either banned or you know how to play against it appropriately. Once some of the the more egregious carry tops do get nerfed down, I highly suspect that we will be seeing a tank meta. We're already seeing an on hit AD carry meta develop in pro play. The first few games on 14.1 have been filled with the Felios, Lucian, and if those two champions aren't picked, then Callista and other on hit ADCs have a high priority. This bodes quite well for most tanks because we will be able to scale up and then impact games against these more on hit style of AD carries and the less prevalent carry top laners in a few patches. Next up in S tier, we have Scion. Much for the same reasons as Cassante, this champion is just really strong and the new items have been a huge, tremendous help to him. If we're against an AD top, we simply go Heart Steal and then stack up all of our HP as often as possible and then into some sort of bombies item. If we're against an AP top, we can rush a Force of nature, we can go straight into Hollow Radiance, you get the idea, we're going to scale regardless. Next up in S tier we have Gwen because she's a tank shredder who excels at killing some of the more beefy tanks. This champion has already been hotfix nerfed once and the nerf is going to be reverted on 14.2, but this champion is going to remain in about this state. Her lane phase is decent and her scaling is very strong, but her severe lack of crowd control keeps her from being a true solo Q carry, hence why she's in S tier. Kale is also going to be in S tier despite her very high win rate for the same reasons. This champion is a scaling champion which means that we're not going to be able to influence our games as early as we need to sometimes. Grubs are a very important part of the modern top lane meta. If we ignore the grubs or if we don't snowball in time as Kale, then we're going to have a difficult time winning games. That about sums up all the most important S tier champions. Let's go ahead and move on to S plus tier or the OP tier. Where these champions are just truly broken. Aatrox is going to be our first S plus tier pick, and this is largely because of his role as a neutralizer. Aatrox can carry games, but more than likely he is going to stalemate and then be more useful in teamfights than his opponents. This is a very strong champion in lane, there's really no way to mess it up unless we make a mechanical error on our own end, and then he's easy to pick up for the most part. The hardest thing to learn on Aatrox is the Q1 into W into Q2 combo, which is going to result in us getting a guaranteed chain pull and then a Q3 on top of that. Sundered Sky on this champion has a ton of value in it does make him scale quite nicely where he didn't really before with Gorging or just Divine Sunder. The stat line is just significantly better on Aatrox and then the guaranteed crit passive is also quite nice when paired with our Deathbringer stance. Jax is next up in S plus tier. This champion is just a menace, he's been a menace for quite some time. His build paths are very diverse, you can build basically anything that you want on this champion and you will find some success. The most common build that I'm seeing on Jax at the moment is Trinity Force into Sundered Sky for obvious reasons. This is essentially how he used to build before Mythic items were placed into the game and this build is quite strong. Spear of Shojin, even though it's been reworked, is still quite strong on Jax and so is Theric's Gage. You can basically build any sort of damage or bruiser item on this champion and it will work out. All we need to worry about on Jax is that we don't completely feed our lane and if we don't feed our lane then we turn into one of the best duelists and split pushers in the entire game and that is only being further buffed in 14.2. Riven is going to be our next S plus tier pick and this is for a few reasons. First and foremost, she is one of the few champions in the game that is still able to stack exuberant amount of ability haste with no real negative. Secondly, after her last round of buffs, the necessity of learning fast Q 
has gone down significantly. We can skip the fast Q altogether and still get a large amount of value out of this champion. Thirdly, Riven has decent, if not playable, matchups into all the other S plus tier champions, and she does counter a lot of things below her in the tier list. She does well into Cassante, she does great against Scion, good against Aatrox, okay against Jax, you get the idea. This champion is just really super solid, I highly recommend that you pick her up. She's not as difficult as everybody makes her seem. Next up on our list is Fiora. Fiora is here because she's Riven, but easier. If you want to play a champion that has a similar amount of carry potential, but a lot less mechanics to her, then I highly recommend that you pick up Fiora. Fiora does have a high skill ceiling, but the skill floor on her is quite lower than Riven, making her a more accessible pick. Her itemization is also quite good, just like Riven's, except instead of going ability haste, we go lifesteal, and we lame out the lane that way. Ravenous Hydra is almost BIS on this champion. I do see Sundered Sky first item Fioras occasionally. I do, however, think that Ravenous Hydra is the way to go on Fiora. It's just really gross, and we're allowed to basically ignore most opponents during our lane phase and then scale up to our three item mark, where we can start 1v uniting the game. Teemo is a new S plus tier denizen, and this is for a few reasons. He is an early game lane bully, he scales really well, and with malignance, he turns into a global presence. This champ can do basically anything. If you need an AD tank, then he can build that. If you want a pure AP nuke champion, then you can also build that. He counters Vayne, he does well into Singed, he counters Mord because he's simply able to outrange them. This champ really doesn't have bad matchups aside from Mage's top, and those are so uncommon I wouldn't really worry about them. Teemo is a great pick for anybody that wants to climb elo as soon as possible without having to play a more fringe champion such as Vayne top or Singed, which we're going to be talking about next. Vayne is here because she counters a lot of these champs. She's really strong into Fiora, she's great into Riven, she's okay into Jax, amazing into Aatrox, and also quite strong into Mordekaiser, Cassante, and Sion. If you've been watching our list for quite some time, then you'll see that Vayne has been steadily rising the ranks in the top tier list for obvious reasons. Her matchups just keep getting better and better, and the meta is shaping its way around her quite nicely. Vayne also gets to double dip into the very strong on-hit items such as Blade of the Ruined King, Terminus, and then opt into more of the tank items such as Jack Show, which is just broken for the amount of efficiency that it grants us. I would play this champion into every single one of the picks that we've listed, aside from Teemo, that is her only terrible matchup. This champion is just really strong, and she's even stronger when we're able to skirmish around grubs in the early game if we're able to take Flash plus Ghost. Our next surprising pick in S plus is going to be Singed, and this is largely due to the buffs to both Riftmaker and Leandris. The combination of Riftmaker plus Leandris is just really strong on most of these AP bruisers and a lot of AP champions in general. Because of this, Singed has shot up in priority, he has good matchups to most of these champions. If we don't have a good matchup, then we're able to proxy. If we're unable to proxy, we'll still be useful because we take Ghost Flash and we're able to run an AD carry out of lane. While this champion does have quite the goofy playstyle, he is still really strong in this patch. All it takes is one look at his win rate to see that. Play him in a normal for a game or two just to get a feeling of what you need to be doing with the poison. Once we do understand this, this is a free elo pick, insanely strong. If we make it to mid game, it's basically a guaranteed win. And last but not least in our list, we're going to have Mordekaiser. This champion is just the epitome of everything that is strong about top lane right now. He's an AP bruiser, able to build Riftmaker, Rylize, and Leandris. His matchups are great into other carries. He's a great team fighter. He can skirmish very well, and his control over the grubs is second to none due to how strong his passive Darkness Rise is against them. It is nearly impossible to fight Mordekaiser and his jungler on grubs because he's constantly going to be sapping their HP for a shield, and he gets a huge amount of free monster damage in his kit because Riot attempted to make him a jungler. This carries over and turns him into one of the best early game skirmishers that we could ever wish to have on topside. Riftmaker is slated for a nerf in 14.2. If you're playing 14.1, pick or ban Mord in every game. I promise you, you will not regret it. This is a fantastic champion. His only bad matchups would be Fiora and Vayne, depending on how skilled the enemy player is. Anyways, this is Unsung with Game Leap. Thank you all for watching and hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys in the next video.